Good afternoon, humans. So I'm, I'm here to share something we at DeepGram learned about large language models and domain-specific language models, and hopefully it's useful for all of you. Hopefully it's, thank you. Hopefully it's useful for all of you. Just a quick uh, show of hands. How many of you are training language models? Okay. How many of you are fine-tuning language models? And how many of you are like not training and fine tuning, but really using them uh, in your day to day? And how many in production? Awesome, thank you. This is very, very useful. So I'll um, uh, quickly share. My name is Anoop Dawar. I do product at DeepGram. And what is DeepGram? DeepGram is a foundational AI company that builds generative AI and speech models. Um, it was founded a long time before, ago before all the GPT mania took over. It was one of the first ones that used deep learning to do speech to text, and that has helped it be the fastest and the most accurate uh, speech to text model system in the, on the planet. And we've adapted these models for customer use cases and specific use cases all over the world. And uh, just a humble brag that it's processed more data than YouTube engine. Right, with that said, um, let's talk about why we're here. So we, we strongly believe after this journey so far that language is the universal AI interface. And there are two primary reasons for this. One is it is the natural way we communicate as humans. And historically, if you look at technology, we didn't have these tools. So we started using CLIs and uh, shortcuts and UIs and things like that. And those have really good place uh, even in the future but this is the primary way we want to communicate. And the second is uh, it captures so much more hidden information that was not possible before, right? A simple example is, okay, 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 right? These are four different okays, but when you transcribe, they're just okay, right? So there is a lot of information that we can glean about the person we are talking to if we had uh, language as a primary interface. So with that said, I finished a, a bucket item list of shouting in front of a lot of people. So thank you very much. Um, and so now when you think about this and think about language AI as a whole journey, we think of it as a loop. The loop is perception, taking something audio and converting it into text. And then once you convert it into text, you can do a lot of things. You can do summarization, you can do diarization, which is a fancy word for saying we can actually label who spoke what words. Um, you can do topic detection, like what were the topics of the conversation. You can do emotion and so on and so forth. Uh, but then, now you have this text and what do you do with it? Well, usually you want to do something more useful than just summarize it, right? And usually this is where you go to the large language model and maybe you, uh, you start doing uh, you know, more interesting sentiment analysis with it. Or maybe you want a response to what was said in the audio. So then you generate that response. Now that response is in text. And then what most people want to do is, okay, well, I want to say it back. The person on the other side, even if it's a virtual agent, should be con able to con converse as a human-like language uh, and uh, voice. So then that's the interact layer, where you basically say, okay, I'm going to take this text response from a large language model and do uh, respond in a voice. Now. Most of this historically used to be very batchy, right? It used to take forever to take speech and convert it into text. Large language models, if you try to do anything meaningful, are going to take significant number of seconds so that it doesn't feel real time. And same with uh, text to speech, right? And we are on the journey to make it as real time as possible. And so the question is, this is where we started investigating large language models. We started to use it for, for un the understand phase. And we found that you know, one model, instead of one model fits all, we found one model fits none. And that may be an unfortunate sort of claim, but what we found in our testing was um, too slow for real time, like I said. Uh, they fail at domain-specific tasks. Um, they, they go stale, right? Model drift is real, people, right? And especially as new data and new customers get onboarded and new products get released, uh, models don't understand them, right? So you have to continuously update them. Uh, as a sidebar, I came from GitLab before this, which was CI, CD, and DevOps, so like I, I really relate with this problem pretty strongly. And we found that they are costly to scale, especially when you want to have a lot of uh, inferences being done on them. 
So what do you do? Well, what's the solution, right? Um, let's take, what do, we want, what do we want rather? We want cost effective, fast, reliable, accurate, highly adapted to data models. This is what we want. And, and what we try to do is we say, okay, let's use an LLM, but instead what we realize is we require domain specific or distilled step-by-step -step models. And let me share why, because let's take an example of a call center. I think we have all been on the receiving end of a call center, so I don't have to explain to this audience what a call center is. Uh, but let's see, <coughs> what are people trying to do with this, with the new technology? We are trying to create voice bots, we are trying to create meeting summarization, audio intelligence, and all of these things. And we started with, hey, why not use a promptable foundational LLM for this? Why not, right? It sounds like it's finally possible. And, you know, it is a broad general knowledge, so it can be applied to all sorts of call centers, right? It is so versatile that it can write poetry to write code. Right? It's an incredible techn tool technology, uh, but it is costly and it is slow. So, and then this was a paper released last week by Google Research. How many of you have seen this paper or this image? Show of hands. Um, so we were really delighted to see this because we, were, we had discovered this over months and months of our own processing, but we realized that, hey, look, even uh, other researchers agree that, hey, if you want highly ta accurate tasks, you don't necessarily have to use large language models. You can do distilling step-by-step -step models that require a little bit more data for your domain, not data about the whole world, a little bit more data about your domain and you can get significantly better accuracy and a smaller model size, which means smaller cost of training and smaller cost of inference. And remember, once your model takes off, your inference cost is gonna be 10x plus of your model cost. Um, so taking a step back, right, I think, how do we do this? Well, we realize that there is a high degree of specificity when you talk about these sort of domain or uh, st uh, models. Uh, and we've seen, for example, in the call center use case, there is a lot of narrow distributed topics that people usually are focused on. There are very narrow speech patterns, right, that agents can use. And then, of course, there is a long tail of rare words um, and so on and so forth. And here is, for example, uh, an illustration of that task specificity, right? I'm not gonna read all 15 tasks, don't worry, but there are 15 tasks, right? And this is what a call agent does on a day-to-day -day basis. So if this is what they do, well, <coughs> let's try to see if we can uh, compare a large language model and a task-specific model. So this is what we gave an LLM that shall remain nameless. Um, but essentially, this is the prompt we gave. And it did a really good job of filling the conversation summary, right? And again, I'm not gonna read through the whole summary, but the TLDR is, it is, an unrealistic summary. Why? Because it's a very clean summary, right? Customer describes an issue, the agent takes an action or presents a solution, the customer accepts, yay, call ends, done, right? But that's not how real calls work. Um, so how do they work? Well, let's look at a real example, right? Same prompt, right? Uh, but there is all sorts of crosstalk happening. One person says something, the other person interrupts. So you have to deal with this crosstalk if you're doing speech to text, transcribe, and then the response. Um, it happens more frequently than we might think. And then uh, <coughs> disfluencies happen, right? I just coughed, right? That's a disfluency right there, right? And these kinds of things happen when you're actually having a real call. Um, and this can make it really hard to read and interpret the transcript or the transcription that's been generated. So we adopted a long language model, and as you can see, you know, the the domain adapted model performs much better on prediction accuracy, much better on loss and on per per perplexity, which is another way of measuring uh, prediction accuracy. And um, now you can see the domain uh, language model conversation. Again, this is TLDR, but it's more realistic. It's actually understanding what's going on. And, um, and, and therefore we, we came to this conclusion that you need instruction models, you need chat models, you need customer specific domain uh, models and you need distilled step-by-step -step models. With that, I had a video which seems like cannot be loaded, but if it was, I could have shown you a demo. Thank you. Questions?
agency issues. Right? For, for, yeah, if you want to do like a trans summary of a large amount of text, the, it's going to take you a while to do it on a large language model. But it, like the demo that I was going to show shows an audio file being transcribed and summarized within interactive timeline. So it feels near real time. And so that allows you to you know, complete the percep percep perceive, understand, uh, interact loop. Thank you.